Girl, I really need to tell you this. Late night munchies really is the wickedest. That's right. Keep it right here. Hey, stuck on girl. Oh, no, 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 no. Said I'm gonna leave you, baby. Gonna leave. You have a father from the West Indies and your mother is Dutch. Um, how did about cultures influence you? How about cultures influence me? Why? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> I grew up in the Caribbean, you know, more with my... I grew up with my grandparents, but my father's parents. So I kind of grew up more with, uh, with the black side of my family, you know, in the Caribbean. So I think most of... My natural influence is, is from that side. I, I didn't, I, when I, I started to live with my mom in Aruba when I was, I think, uh, 12. Mm. And I lived there a few years, but she has no family there. All her family is in Holland still. So I never really had a real close relationship with them, you know. I have one or two. So I think I have more influence from, from, from the darker side, you know. But I'm always aware of, of, of the mix, I think you can't get around it when you when when you're half half, you know, yeah. you kinda Yeah. You know, uh, in between. Yeah. Um <clears throat> you grew up with your grandparents, right? Mm -hmm. Why? Well my mom was young, was gonna do school, so she was living in Holland at the time. I was born in Holland actually. And you know, I went there as a baby. And my father was young also and you know yeah. He wasn't about to raise a kid by himself, so I stayed with his parents, naturally, my grandma, my grandfather. Aye. You know, typical yeah. Caribbean yeah. lifestyle with a thing. Yeah. And um, you've been signed to uh, VP and Green Greensleeves. And do you feel like um, people have bigger expectations than before on your, as an artist now? Why? But then, I guess maybe to a certain extent, you know. Look, as far as I'm concerned, actually I'm still signed to Rockin' Vibes. All right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. My, it's, it's this, for me, nothing has really changed. It's the same manager, the same label. Now my, you know, my manager, my label, we have to deal with, with yeah. green sleeves for my music. But basically, I work with the same people, the same label. So personally, I don't feel any change. But I could imagine that people's perception. Mm. From outside, you know, seeing Green Sleeves VP as probably the biggest player in reggae, you know, yeah. music that they would expect, you know, that if Green Sleeves pick it up, it's supposed to be saying something. Yeah. You know. Yo. Yeah. surprising because you can imagine in Holland um, there was no real market for the music you know no you were never hearing back then when I came with that album there was no dance hall on the radio no anything it was rap and R&B but we just did our thing and people picked up to, you know picked up to it so I guess it, it worked both ways you know no one was doing it but because I came with it I think it got some attention because it was different yeah, but you you won, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you won Best Live Act, yeah. uh, Best Artist, right? Mm -hmm. Best Album. That's quite good. Yeah, like I said, I was, yeah. that, was, that was a crazy year, man. Like I said, I was really, I was, I don't even think I was even still doing music seriously, you know? I started to do this thing, and like I said, I met Rude in 2002. My first album was released in 2006. By then, obviously, Rude was serious. You know, he started a label. He made, you know, he was gonna bring out an album. For me, I think I was still kind of caught in between. I used to be messing around with friends, DJing, singing a little bit, but nothing serious at all. When I met Rude, I don't think I even had one song written. Mm -hmm. So with him, I started to do music, and he pushed it. You know, so 2006, when that was released, 
I was kind of going with the flow because things were happening, you know, so I was going along, but yeah. I wasn't really in my mind, you know? No. I don't even know how to explain to you. It wasn't real serious to me, you know? So yeah. then it got reactions like that. It was even more like, what, yeah. you know, what's going on here? Yeah. And uh, the tune Blaze It yeah. went number one in Germany as well. Mm -hmm. So how that summer or must have been wicked Tell us a little bit more about specific moments, about like when you fi finally had your breakthrough. Boy, I don't know if I would call it breakthrough, but I did blaze it for a DJ in Amsterdam, DJ Waxfin. Me and Rude recorded the rhythm, just actually to get some play in the clubs. Mm. We sent it to him, he loved it. He sent it to, you know, contacts of his. We did the same thing. And before we knew it, people wanted dubs and it was all over the place. And that just kind of happened out of nowhere, man, you know, and that kind of started my my European thing. Because before that, I was really in, in Holland. But that track, I think, is probably the first track that really a lot of people in Europe got to know. And that kicked that off. So then we started to do, you know, little things in different countries. And that got that ball rolling, really. But that was a next thing that just... It was seriously more like a dub plate style thing and it just happened. You know me, blaze it till me eyes turn When the figure gets a higher heart, yo When me burn and me ready for your love, yeah I bet on them who the fuck, yeah Again, you know me, till me eyes turn In an early interview with Dave Rodigan, he told us that uh, he was very disappointed in the Jamaican music scene and the most exciting album at this moment was your album. What do you have to say about that? Mm, wow, man, that's an honor to hear somebody like Radigan say that about my music, you know. So, yeah, I feel honored he would say something like that. Disappointed about the Jamaican music scene. <laughs> I guess I could understand what he's saying in a way, you know. A little bit too shallow, he said. Yeah, I think the shallowness, I think... I think it's pro I think it has a lot to do with auto tune. Yeah. I think in my opinion I think auto tune starting to make everybody sound like each other. You know? So when I listen to a dance style mixtape now uh, so it's just that if you don't really pay attention it sounds like one long mix of the same thing, you know? Yeah. So in that aspect I could understand what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. All right, so in in 2001, you went to the Netherlands to start study. Mm, uh, 99. 99. All right, sorry. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what did you plan to study there? Boy, I was going to turn what the hell I wanted to do? A computer technician. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was supposed to be doing. And what happened? Boy, I think Amsterdam happened to me. You know, I grew up in a very small island, St. Eustatius. I lived in Aruba for a while, so I was in the Caribbean my whole life, you know. And I came to Holland and I was on my own in a big city for the first time, experiencing everything. So I was more busy with the experience than with school itself, you know. That's my favorite munchie, boy. That's a good one. You know what I love? I'm gonna tell you, I got introduced to something recently. I love cinnamon sticks from Domino's Pizza. All right. <laughs> you know them? They have this cinnamon bread. All right. Wicked, wicked. So, sounds sweet. So it's wicked. Sometimes I go there just and order because you cannot order it by itself. You know they're very smart. You have to buy a pizza <laughs> to be able to order the sticks. So sometimes I just order the pizza just to be able to. Order. Tell me now, what do you stand for? Life you not give stand for. You promote and support war. What do you stand for? Cause you not say nothing wrong. Yes, like you never did here. So what do you stand for? Yo, Sweden people, this is Ziggy coming straight out of Amsterdam where the ganja is legal. Chilling out with you right here today in Sweden, in Stockholm, about to go to work just right now. I just had a big interview with the Late Night Munchies and this is a special salute and big up to the wickedest web TV, web radio program coming out of Sweden. So check them out at latenightmunchies.se. 